talking to the next person saying the same thing and maybe that conversation may not go the same way but I mean you can't control everything that happens past right. that point but I do feel that we do have a responsibility and an obligation even when you're talking to an adult or a child or whatever to educate right. if you are able but I do believe that there is a way to do that productively and mm -hmm. you know what you've offered here but I don't think we should just say you know yeah you know what you're right and that's the truth I don't believe that mm -hmm. but I think that if you have attempted and that person is not taking it in then at that point then you keep it moving well one of the challenges that and, and what you just described is how it normally goes because there's somebody who feels like, no, I, I can't let you say that. Anybody ever said that to themselves? I can't let you say that. That's not the truth. That, and what I'm saying, because a conscious conversation is a new exercise, this is not, again, a traditional thing. This is not something that does people are participating in on the regular and then choosing not to. It's, it's not like people have this in their hip pocket and they say, well, I'm choosing not to be in a conscious conversation. This is a new, a new concept. So what I'm saying is in a conscious conversation, if they say it's five, this is not a math class. Now, if they're in a math class, it's different. I can even tell them if I'm having a conversation with them, I can accept you saying this five, but I'm not sure what they'll say in a math class. But in a, an attempt to have a conscious conversation, if they say it's five, whether they can explain to me or not why they say it's five, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's cool. Now I think it's four, and I explain why I think it's four, and then we move on. Now, that concept can be literal, but it can also be a microcosm of a larger type of discussion and a larger subject matter and everything else. Because for the most part in our traditional conversations, we have a problem, even what are called absolutes. There, there was an absolute that Pluto was a planet. And if you didn't write that down on the test, not only was it absolute, it was scientific fact. And if you didn't write that down on the test, you got it wrong. Well, that scientific fact and absolute is no more true. Not only that, but 100 years from now, 90% of what we think is right is going to become obsolete. And it's because there's so much more information and so much that we don't know and so many next levels of understanding. But the challenge for us is because we start getting locked into our thought process and what you might identify as absolutes, we cut ourselves off from being exposed to all of this other stuff we're not available, or, I mean, not aware of. And so this is the other part of what a conscious conversation is about because it allows us to leave our mindset and our consciousness open to receive information that we're not familiar with, that we may not understand. But even if we don't understand it, it's okay because it becomes a dot, an information dot. And then when we get more information dots, all of a sudden those things come together and then it begins to make sense to us. So what I'm saying too about a conscious conversation is it opens up the opportunity for us to even connect dots later on based on information we were allowed ourselves to receive because we weren't so finite in our thinking and in our understanding of things. So it's, there's a, this, the example of the addition and subtraction is just a small understanding of how a bigger approach to life is and receiving information from the universe and keeping ourselves open to next levels of understanding. Does that make sense? And so, so yeah, so in here, in a, in a, the other thing about a conscious conversation is everybody doesn't have to be on board. So for instance, my, if my goal is to have a conscious conversation based on these six um, out, outlines, I can have it with anybody. I don't have to have active participation from everybody because my objective is to have a certain energy and certain approach and certain desire 
to communicate and understand. Yes, sir. So the question I have is, people that approach a conversation with that um, a particular mindset of, uh, do they just want to be right, or do they want to understand? And uh, I'm going to let you touch on that. I think that traditionally, we want to be right. And that's how it traditionally goes. But that's also why I decided to try to create another approach to having a conversation. Because I'm watching how the conversation goes when people want to be right and identify somebody else's wrong. And especially with our emotional states of mind and how we you know, depend on what's going on in our lives and everything, you know, right and wrong can just explode in something totally non-productive. One of the things that I always say is if you Google, see right and wrong leads to arguments a lot of times, not all the time. But if you Google argument leads to and hit return, every single day, 365 days a year, you will see new tragedies every single day that started with an argument that escalated to something when both people are emotionally out of control and nobody knew how this thing was going to end. It's like Russian roulette. So the other thing about a conscious conversation is the objective is to diminish the potential for an open conflict and argument that leads to something we don't expect. And that is it has a better chance of happening when at least one person has their faculties about them. Usually when something tragic happens, it's because both people were emotionally out of control. Any more thoughts about the guidelines? Yes, yes. Okay, so in one of your guidelines, you talked about uh, like passive aggressiveness and how sometimes uh, certain things yeah certain things can be uh, passive aggressive like uh, facial um, expressions and things like that and um, what I thought to be very interesting is that um, how some people perceive um, through their eyes what you mean by the way that you're looking and um, because very often like I scrunch up my face and things like that if I'm processing something or whatever it may be and to someone else it could be perceived as me being disrespectful or disagreeing or having an issue with the way they look I could I, I, obviously I'm not saying anything at that point I'm just looking and um, you know so I, I guess my thing here is that um, what happens when someone perceives uh, your look as being something that it really does not mean? I'm so glad you asked that question. There's absolutely nothing we can do about how people choose to perceive what we say. When we're speaking in the context of a conscious conversation, we're talking about intent. So if I'm sitting at the table and I act with intent to let them know I am totally disagreeable with what they're saying by my facial expressions or certain body language, that's what we're speaking about. But we can't control people who decide to perceive things however they choose to. We, we have no control over that. So ultimately, it's, it's about our spirit and our energy. And, and if you're doing something with good intentions and you know it from inside you there's nothing you can do about people who try who decide to perceive it another way you can't control that the only opportunity to control anything we have is control ourselves and we have some challenges having some control over us meeting our own <laughs> expectations of ourselves so yeah can't do anything about that Any other thoughts about the guidelines? Yeah. Continuation of what you just said, um, and I was thinking, if, um, if I'm trying to have a conscious conversation, mm -hmm. and you just said, 
everyone in the room doesn't necessarily have to have it. Now, if we, if both you and I are having a conversation and we're coming from the conscious conversation.